Hi friends of cocktails! Today we're making a crisp, fresh and citrusy cocktail, but we'll add what the Japanese call the essence of deliciousness. This is the umami martini. To make it, I used Japanese kinobi gin and sake with a dash of spruce tips bitters. The umami comes from the garnish of a soy sauce infused pickled mushroom and drops of olive oil flavored with dried mushrooms and the soy sauce mentioned before. To chill the cocktail I used green tea ice cubes, which also adds to the umami flavor. Pretty cool, right? It's immediately clear this isn't a regular martini. You get the umami aroma from the mushroom, with forest notes from the bitters. On the taste, you first get a fresh, crisp gin martini, with the pepper and tea notes of the Kinobi gin, made unique by the addition of sake, bitters and green tea ice. But you quickly get the umami and slightly salty flavors of the soy sauce we used to infuse the mushrooms. When you drink the drop of mushroom olive oil and soy sauce, the umami really takes over. The final step in the flavor evolution happens when you take a bite of the mushroom. All of that makes for one of the most interesting martinis you'll ever try. It's a martini that coats your mouth with a savory flavor. Let's see how to make it. It's cocktail time. So as mentioned, to make today's martini we need gin, sake and bitters. Kenobi Kyoto dry gin is made from rice spirit and is complemented by the addition of regional botanicals, including yellow yuzo, hinoki, sancho pepper, bamboo leaf, ginger and fine gyokuru tea. These are split into six flavor groups and distilled individually before being blended together to create this small batch artisanal gin. And to make it the umami martini, we need our garnishes soy sauce infused pickled mushrooms and olive oil flavored with dried mushrooms. The final component is the green tea ice cubes. Instead of just chilling and diluting, this ice will also add some fresh and umami notes to the cocktail. Before I show you how to make the cocktail, let's first take a look how to make these ingredients. I'll start with making the mushroom flavored olive oil. I'm using this porcini mushroom that I foraged last week when I started working on this recipe. We'll of course use this opportunity to shoot some scenes in nature. Mushroom foraging is really popular in some countries, including Slovenia. If you decide to head out and look for fungi, make sure you know exactly what you're picking. If you're not 100% sure, it's better to go to a farmer's market or ask an expert. So here's my mom helping me out. How's that for some wholesome content? These are of course best when they're fresh. But if you need to use one for filming in about a week, you can place it in the freezer when you get home. You could use any mushrooms you like, but I like the strong taste of the porcini, which is what we want since we only use a couple of drops of the olive oil. I'll dry it out with a dehydrator, but you could also sun dry them. Both of these are a great way to keep mushrooms for a long time after they are in season. Set a temperature to 50 degrees Celsius or 120 Fahrenheit, and this should take about 6 hours to fully dehydrate. don't have that much time, so here's our swapping mushrooms that I always have on hand for cooking. Keep them in a sealed jar away from sunlight and this should be good for at least up to a year. But I'll use some to infuse this extra virgin olive oil from these Kalamata olives. This oil will be great because it doesn't solidify in my fridge or on top of the cocktail. That's not an indication of lower quality of the oil, but of the olive variety and ripeness of the olive at processing. If your olive oil solidifies in the fridge, you can try adding a tiny bit of any vegetable oil, 
which will lower the solidification temperature and it should remain liquid. 50 ml for 1 and 2 thirds of an ounce will be plenty, but you can of course use this delicious infused olive oil for cooking as well. For the infusion we of course need to add the dried porcini mushrooms, 3 grams could be enough. Then we blend, strain, filter and wait. Give it some time and you'll end up with mushroom infused olive oil. This umami oil could be used for fat washing a spirit as well and should work great with something like gin or mezcal. The next part is a bit faster. The umami version of an olive or onion garnish of a classic or Gibson martini will be a pickled mushroom which will be infused with soy sauce for a day. So we don't make this cocktail too salty, try to get the soy sauce with reduced salt. This one has under 10 grams per 100 milliliters, while some have up to 25 grams. Stuff the smallest jars you have with the pickled mushrooms and cover them with soy sauce. This will also be a great umami and slightly sour snack with a sandwich. Place them in the fridge for 24 hours as you go and make the last ingredient, the green tea ice. I'm using Japanese Sencha Satsuma. Hope I said that right. I'll add half a gram per 100 ml of water. With 1 liter and 800 ml I added 9 grams of green tea. The amount of tea I'm making is calculated based on how much ice I can make in one go, so I adjust accordingly. For green tea I'm aiming for the water temperature to reach 70 degrees Celsius or 160 Fahrenheit, at which point I'll add the tea and let that steep. According to this hourglass, green tea needs to steep for 3 minutes. It's a color-coded hourglass, so it has to be right. After that goes by really quickly, it's time to strain the tea. Again, do this based on your equipment capability. Green tea contains a significant amount of glutamate and theanine, types of amino acids which impart a pleasant, savory umami taste. Once it's filtered, it's time to get it ready to go in the freezer. I'll be using this homemade cooler I made for making clear ice. The green tea could color the plastic over a typical cooler, so this is a cheap and easy solution. I'll show you how to make it in the cocktail engineering episode on making clear ice, once we make it. Also, not sure if I need to point this out, but don't place the hot tea in the freezer, let it cool down first. Now that you've got all of that, let's make the cocktail. Since everyone from Kyoto to Dubai knows that you stir a martini, I'll start by chilling the mixing glass using the green tea ice. It's not often that we start adding flavors before the first ingredient. Then add 60 ml or 2 ounces of gin. According to the box that came in, Kenobi means the beauty of the seasons. If you know Japanese, please tell me if that's true in the comments. Instead of a dry vermouth, I'll add 15 ml or half an ounce of Shirayuki sake. The Konishi Brewery has been producing traditional sake in Hyogo Prefecture, the historical birthplace of Japanese sake since 1550. And I always add bitters to my martinis, since you can highlight certain flavors in the drink. One dash of spruce tips bitters will do just that for the earthy and citrusy notes on the Kenobi gin. Before adding the ice, prepare the mushroom. Take it out of the soy sauce, so that strong salty flavor doesn't take over the whole drink. Then add plenty of green tea ice and stir, this time to chill, dilute and add flavor. When you're done, get the chilled glass out of the freezer and put the cocktail in. This was the easy part, now come the little umami bombs. First add the soy sauce infused mushroom, followed by 3 drops of the mushroom infused olive oil. I know this all sounds crazy, but trust me, it's worth it. Final touch are the 3 drops of soy sauce, right on the oil drops. This might pop before you get a chance to sip them, but you'll get that savory flavor either way. And that's how you make the umami martini. I already made the Gibson martini and a separate episode on how to pickle your onions. Let me know in the comments if you like these savory cocktails. I'll see you next week with another cocktail time twist. Cheers! We need our garnishes. Ja.